today's first interview, I have the pleasure to talk to Astrid Allemann from Swisscom's Conversational AI team. She's a senior knowledge engineer and already a Teneo expert. I hope you enjoy the interview. Hi Astrid, great to see you here and uh, thanks for taking your time for this interview. Um, we have been in contact already for quite some years now uh, around your projects, but maybe you can give us a, a little introduction uh, about yourself, around your, your background, how you came into Conversation LAI, what you're currently doing at, at Swisscom, right? And uh, what kind of tenure related projects you have been working on so far? Yes, sure. Hi, Benjamin. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I've always been passionate about languages and I always love being able to talk to people in their mother tongues. And that is something that I really like. I don't really like switching to English just because <laughs> you don't have another language to communicate in. So after learning French, English and Italian at high school or at school, I decided to study Scandinavian studies and Japanology. So I have a background in linguistics and I then also decided to go really for linguistics in my master's. So I studied Scandinavian studies there again with a focus on linguistics. And I also decided to take general linguistics because yeah, I really like that topic. And yeah, during my master's, I started to work as a German and as a Norwegian teacher for adults. So there, this was my first job where I really could use, uh, yeah, my language skills, let's say. And after my master's, then I didn't really know in which field I wanted to work. It, I, I liked the teaching job but it was not something that I really wanted to do for a long time. There was always like this insecurity, if you really have enough courses, um, enough students and so on. So I was looking around, but there was, there was nothing that really attracted me. So I was a bit planless, let's say, <laughs> after my studies. But then it was four and a half years ago, a friend who worked at Swisscom at the time asked me if I wanted to transcribe data for them. So they started um, with a project of transcri trans transcribing Aviar data for, um, from the Swisscom service hotline because they wanted to train their own ASR models. And it was in the languages Swiss German, High German, French, Italian and English. And this was really something that I thought sounds super interesting. So I started to work on transcriptions in these five languages, besides my teaching jobs. <laughs> and after it was just like a temporary part-time job. So I thought, yeah, why not? Let's try that. But after three months, Swisscom asked me if I wanted to like take over some responsibilities there and build up like a serious, let's say a serious um, transcription team. And I would be responsible for setting up guidelines and the yeah, quality assurance to make sure that the data was really good and usable for training an ASR system. And yeah, I decided to do that. It was still, <laughs> still part-time and still temporary. So, this was yeah really fun to do. It was, of course, I could use um, a lot of knowledge that I gained in, in my studies. And again, after three months, I was asked if I wanted to join um, Plato. The, this is the conversational AI platform at Swisscom, so the team I'm currently working in. So they asked me if I wanted to really join them and also take over other tasks and work closer together. And yeah, so I decided to do that. I started back then in the ASR team. And again, after some months, I <laughs> heard about the team that was, was working on the chatbot, that they were looking for a computational linguist. So I talked to the product owner of the team because this sounded again, really interesting to me. I had no clue about chatbots. So far, I was really more or less just involved in the, in the transcription 
which, which was a very yeah linguistic task, let's say. Um, but about chatbots, I <laughs> at that time I didn't even have heard of it, as yeah, still many people today don't. So yeah, we talked a little bit, and we were both not sure if I could really work in this field because I was lacking the technical background. I had never heard of machine learning before. I didn't know what data science is. I didn't know what an API is. Um, but yeah, we had the feeling that apart from that, it would really match and that we would give it a try. So I started in that team three and a half years ago, more or less. And shortly after I took the Teneo training and the week after the Teneo training, I started implementing the first flow um, in, yeah, in, in our chatbot. And that was really, I think it was actually the first flow that was ever implemented in our chatbot in, I mean, in, in Teneo, in the conversational chatbot, our bot has been existing already for two, three years, I think at that time but it was more click bot style and it, yeah, we decided that we wanted to go fully conversational. So I started with that and started working as a knowledge engineer. So this was the first, yeah, let's say the first thing I did in Teneo and on, on our projects. And yeah, so Shortly after, I was then also involved in our second project, which is the voice assistant on the TV box. There we already had a fully fledged um, solution, but it was not live at the time. So the, the launch was shortly after I joined. And yeah, I then also started to work on, on, this, on this TV solution. And one and a half years ago, we also then went live with our third project, which is the conversational IVR. So we have a voice bot for our service hotline. That's actually where I started originally with transcribing the data. So I was now working also in Teneo for, for this project. So these are the three projects that we currently work on in our conversational AI platform and yeah today after some years we really we saw that we need more knowledge engineers that it's not enough if just me and some software developers and some data scientists uh, work on these solutions <laughs> and now we are around 10 knowledge engineers and today I am the subject matter expert for our dialogue system so um, and this role contains, let's say, the definition of best practices when it comes to really Teneo development. And I also need to make sure that the work happens in a harmonized way, because we are, the knowledge engineers are um, spread over several teams and we are working on several topics, on several solutions, in several languages. And yeah, let's say the danger you speak that you then just diverge. And my role is there to make sure that we really pull on the same string and that we do yeah, our work in a harmonized way. Yeah, thank you. Sounds like you took some uh, great decisions over the last years and uh, the conversation I will definitely needs also language experts and not only coders, uh, as you said, right? So that sounds really great. Uh, within your project, if I may ask, uh, which one would be your, your favorite pro project and why? So I would say from this, the perspective of, of a knowledge engineer, when it really comes to, to working on the solutions, I don't have a favorite project. Um, all of them are, have their interesting parts and the parts where it's a struggle. <laughs> so, for example, TV and CIVR, they, they re, um, have to use, the, let's say, the ASR transcription um, in Teneo. So we, we are dependent on the ASR component. And for Swiss German, which is currently only implemented in the, in the TV solution. So for Swiss German, we even get a machine translated transcript. 
And yeah, of course, you can imagine that with all the Swiss dialects that we have, this is not an easy task for the ASR <laughs> and for the machine translation. So this is um, something that is very interesting to work with and you need to find creative solutions so that you can detect also mistranscribed input, for example. And for TV, there you have huge entity databases and it's not an easy task to decide um, if the customer now wants to see a movie or if it's more like about an area the customer wants to, to search in for movies and so on, because of course you have a lot of yeah, words that are overlapping in the entities, let's say. You have a lot of English titles inside the German solution and so on. And for the chatbot, on the other hand, there you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to care um, about ASR. There you get the inputs directly from the customers. But of course, customers can <laughs> write <laughs> with no mistakes at all or with a lot of typos. They can write just one word or they can write something that is more email style than, than a short message. And there you need to make sure that you really um, either disambiguate that you, if the, the, the input was too short, that you really ask to make sure that you understand what it is about, or if it's more an email, that you really grasp the essence of this long input and not just stop after the first sentence, although it might come something completely different afterwards. So yeah, I think it's really from the working point of view, all of them are quite interesting and have different challenges, let's say. But I would say from the customer point of view, I at the moment like best our chatbot. It's called Sam. And at this point of time, this is really, um, Sam has a lot of functionalities. We started um, with CIVR only one and a half years ago, so we don't have that many automated cases there yet. Of course, there will come a lot more in the future, but Sam is really, I would say, more mature. We have like 10 to 15 use cases in different areas like billing, assurance, admin topics. And we also have an FAQ database with currently around 350 question answer pairs. So we have really a, a huge coverage there, let's say already. And in addition, also our feedback and transfer handling is, is now really, we brought that to a next level recently. So there, I, I would say Sam is, is already quite mature. That's why I, I really like our chatbot. Yeah, sounds great. Looking forward to hear more about Samson in the future and about more, more use cases getting automatized more and more. Um, also around the TV project sounds also very interesting. Um, from the point of view, let's say that it's not only internal projects, but you can really see people outside, right? Theoretically, you go outside into the streets and you could see somebody using your solution, right? Uh, since basically all Swisscom clients in some way uh, use the solution, Sam, uh, when getting in, in touch with customer support, for example, right? Or maybe your friends watching Blue TV at home or so, then somebody is uh, directly interacting with your project, right? So that's something great in, in what I think in, in your case too, right? Or have you used uh, your solutions already in your uh, private life? Or have you seen somebody interacting next to you with your own projects? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's really cool. Um, I personally don't have a TV, so I cannot use our voice assistant on the, on the TV box, but um, I have definitely friends who use it and that always makes me a little bit yeah let's say proud or it's just super nice to see that uh, yeah people around you use actually what what you worked on um but for me i i already used sam and and also our service hotline um when i moved last year i wanted to change my address and it's i it, i didn't manage it didn't work online so I sent a message to Sam and 
I still didn't manage there, but then I called the, the service hotline and I was directly transferred to the correct agent because we haven't had something implemented for, um, yeah, some error handling for this case that was not working for me. Um, and everything went very smoothly and it was super quick. That was, that was really nice. And when I came back, for example, now from vacation, like one month ago, I wanted to turn on my, my router after three weeks and it didn't just work again. So also then I just sent um, yeah, a message to Sam in our app. And yeah, because I also first needed two different kinds of passwords that somehow were not <laughs> saved in my, were not stored in my smartphone, smartphone. And then, yeah, Sam could help me there. So, <laughs> of course, I also knew that that uh, this would happen, but it's just for me, it's so much faster to just send this message than to Google it myself. So, yeah, I really when I need it, I I definitely use use our chatbot. Yes. Great. Uh, send to the help then also <laughs> more one is more use cases. And uh, <laughs> you mentioned at the beginning, your conversational AI team is called Plato, right? And um, yes. you're working in a rather big team. Maybe you can explain in some words how it's working in such a big team and how many people work in, in your team, in your conversational AI team? Yes, so as already mentioned, Plato is the conversational AI platform of Swisscom. We are around 40 people currently working um, in different, in six different squads. So smaller teams and we have, as already mentioned, around 10 knowledge engineers. We have software engineers, we have data scientists, we have business engineers. And then, of course, product owners, scrum masters, project managers and so on. So I would say we are quite diverse when it comes to our background, but also we come from many different nationalities. We speak many different languages. And this is for me super interesting to work in such an environment. Of course, it also brings a lot of challenges <laughs> because if I talk, let's say to a DevOps engineer, we sometimes need someone who translates. And yeah, I don't mean like from German to French, but really from linguistics to <laughs> engineering, because we have, of course, very different pictures, our teams, work on on different features have a different focus and so on so it is sometimes challenging to make sure that we're really talking about the same things that we are really want to go in the same directions because sometimes the priorities are of course different but again i think it's it's really super interesting um, we have, as I said, six squads. One, uh, the one I am in is working on intent recognition. So we have focus on data science and also, let's say, linguistics. I would, I would say. Then we have a billing team. They are responsible for implementing billing use cases. We have an assurance team. So they implement use cases with where you get technical support when something is not working. We have a team for overarching um, bot topics. So they are, for example, they have um, focus more on user experience, but they also work with Taneo because they, for example, implement the transfer handling and the whole feedback and the greeting and so on. Um, we have a team that focuses on ASR, machine translation and the retrieval system with our FAQ question answer pairs. And then of course we have a core team uh, which works on, on DevOps and make sure that everything works <laughs> for us, let's say. Yes. So there's a certain need of uh, meetings also to align between the teams, I guess. Absolutely, uh, yes. So, yeah, uh, great team that you have. Um, you are working now already for, for many years also with uh, Teneo, right? Uh, Teneo expert already and your, let's say, the contact point in your team on everything Teneo. If, uh, let's say if I ask you around uh, your favorite features of the Teneo platform, what would you say? Yeah, I think it's it's two features that are, let's say, um, 
personal <laughs> or um so first of all i am very happy that i am able to work with teneo without a technical background so i don't need um coding skills or i mean of course if you want to do everything in teneo it's not it's not working without any coding skills but i can do a lot of work with a very basic knowledge so i really like this this graphical ui that also for example business uh, people can use and they could even draw their own flows this is not happening um, in in our team as in in plato we really have the knowledge engineers for implementing the flows but in theory if we want to change that it would be possible and it's it's i think it's really nice if you just see the flow and have a, a graphical a, a, yeah a graphical ui so i really like that this is the the first the first feature i would say and the second one is um the language resources so the, teneo comes with a lot lot of uh, language with these language objects that you can when you start a new solution you can just start working with these you don't need to code everything yourself or yeah just hard code everything so this is super helpful i would say and you also have the possibilities to create your own language objects you can enhance that as you wish and this is i think really something that that, that i like about teneo and then you can also easily combine it with let's say machine learning um so we can use our classifiers in combination with with the language objects so that we can really have a hybrid approach and don't we don't need to only focus on machine learning or syntax rules. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks Astrid. A, a very good se selection. I also like uh, those. Uh, in the end, uh, Boltineo is then, like say, nice for as a low-code platform, but also as a pro-code platform, right? You can code um, if you, you need it, right? But you can get a lot of uh, work done also without coding. So this, this is just very nice. And you can also get started without uh, having data from the beginning, right? So what you mentioned from the second point, that's great. Yeah, um, thank you so much, Astrid, for taking your time for uh, this interview today and also for being part of the Teneo developer community. Um, if anybody wants to contact you on anything uh, conversational, I, I guess uh, people can find you on, on LinkedIn and in the Teneo developers community also, if they want to reach out. Yes, absolutely. Thank um, you for having lot, me, Benjamin. <laughs> thank you and talk to you soon, Astrid. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.